Hi there, I'm Tony Glynn and welcome to the PGG Rights and Stud Tour. Now this week we're right down in Western Southland, we're near Tua Tapri at Waiau Hereford Stud. Now we're fairly lucky to be here this week, it's the 45th annual bull sale, we've got 26 bulls on offer, and we've also got some visitors from across the ditch. We'll see you soon. Daryl King here at Wael Hereford Stud. How long have you been back on the farm, Daryl? Uh, we've been. I've been here 36 years. I've been away a couple of times. I went away and done a bit of mustering for a while, and uh, spent a few years on um, a couple of stations. And then I went away and learned about the uh, Monitor Farm program, and come back again and and uh, tried to put some of that into practice. So uh, yeah. Now, fairly big sort of an operation you're running here. What what what's the size of the place? Uh, the place is 2,000 hectares. Um, we're we finish all our stock. Um, I don't see the, the point in selling store stock for some of us to make the money on it. Uh, we finish about 5,300 lambs a year and we finish our steers, around about 120 steers. We kill 300 cattle a year. We finish all our own deer. Um, yeah, so the stock, the stock numbers on the property are, um, we winter 1,100 cattle, winter about 900 deer and about six and a half, a bit over six and a half thousand sheep. Is it a very cold sort of a climate here? Uh, it is. Um, this year's been very kind to us, but uh, sometimes um, July and August can get quite cruel. So, uh, but no, we, we get through. You farm to your climate, so we live close to the mountains. We're only 15 k's from the mountains. A bit of snow on them too there today. Yeah, oh, it's um, not as bad as it was two days ago, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not too bad. Yeah. Uh, but we're not that wet. We get somewhere between oh, sort of 48, 55 inches a year, uh, three or four falls of snow a year. Now, Hereford, the chosen breed, tradition or? Um, possibly is because of my parents, but no, I enjoy the Herefords. We're getting a good return on our investment with them. Um, the cattle weights that we kill at, at, at Lyons and at Matara, um, yeah, no, we're getting a good return. And they're good, muscly cattle. What about some of the weights on some of those stud cows? What do you reckon you'd go there? Um, <laughs> the stud cows, yeah. Uh, I know for a fact that we killed some dry cows about six weeks, a month, been a month, six weeks ago, and one cow actually dressed out 451 kilos. So, um, yeah, no, that's, that's what it's all about. It's getting paid for weight, grass to meat. So, they're big cows. You're fairly keen on the stud side of it? Yeah, no, it's my parents' passion, but... Uh, myself and the staff do all the work with the cattle, um, the AI program, uh, the, the management of the, of the uh, stud cows and the calves is all done through myself in conjunction with parents, but normally myself and the staff make all the decisions about what's actually going to go happen, or you know, that's in conjunction with the parents though. And of course wife Nikki there? Yeah, 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 no, Nikki has a, she's a fair input into what goes, happen, what, what goes on here, and especially in the spring when the calving and all that stuff's going on. So we've just had the conclusion of the 45th annual sale here, Daryl. How did that go for you? No, it's good. It's, um, <laughs> it's really good to have it over with. Um, no, we, 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 uh, we sold 20 bulls today and um, we had uh, 50 heifers up and they made $1,350 each. Uh, I was really pleased with that. We, we, made a, uh, we made a good job with those heifers. So, um, yeah, we've been paid for them and um, they're actually a bit of a wee bit of... Between the staff and myself, we're quite proud of them what we've done to those heifers. The bulls, they looked all right. They, they were good bulls. Um, no, you've got to take, when you're in this sort of business, you've got to take the day as it comes. And we've had a good, we've had a good day today. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm satisfied with what we've done. Um, we've got payback, so uh, that's good. And good to see uh, a few bulls going to the North Island. Yeah, no, we're very lucky. Our bulls go far and wide. Um, Canterbury, North Island, West Coast, um, St Latago. Um, some of them go locally. So, no, it's good. Dean Eady from Birchwood Station near Ojai. Now you purchased the bull today. Fairly happy with the purchase, Dean? Definitely, Tony. You picked up Lot 22 today. It's a good looking bull. It was a bit weak on the old pigmentation, but we're pretty happy with it. It was the heaviest bull in the sale by about 18 k's or something, so pretty heavy. And no stranger to the YL Hereford sale, you guys? Not really. My father's and, and his father, they've been coming here for about 35 years buying bulls. Most of our herds predominantly uh, bloodlines from the YL studs, so good cattle. That's why we keep coming back. Now you get some fairly harsh winters there, a little bit of snow at Birchwood Dean, you'd want a fairly hardy bull. 
No, definitely Tony. We, we do have harsh winters uh, down here in Southland and the, the horned cattle, they uh, sort of thrive in that environment really. Yeah. You know how many breeding cows you got up there at Birchwood? Uh, running about 400 cows, yeah. Just with a balance of heifers in them, 70 heifers coming on and 330 cows. So. Now you like the horned Herefords? Yeah, no, they're a good breed. It's hard to find horned, nice, good horned Herefords now around the country. Um, about a third of our, or two thirds of our herd is horned and a third's poly. So a lot of catalogues coming in the mail, lots of studs to choose from and plenty of figures to go through, Dean. Yeah, definitely, Tony. Um, we're not really facts and figures uh, farmers. I mean, when we go to a bull sale, we just like to look through all the bulls on offer and, and pick out the ones we like. We have a bit of a look at their figures, but we mostly buy on uh, the gut feeling, really, what, what they look like and, and um, sort of how they move. Uh, Dad and I both feel that um, one reason we come back here is because Colin and Daryl are very passionate about their stud. Um, Colin's very active around the country visiting people and, and um, it's, just, it's just good to see really. Yeah, that's one of the reasons we, we come back year after year. Colin and Faye King here at YL Hereford Stud. Where did it all start, Colin? Oh, well I left school. I went to Linwood Station in 1950 and then ripped all through the station, drill around the country, at south and from Waikato to the west coast and from Balfour right through to um, Ben Nevis. Then I did four seasons in Amarama and a flying gang up there in Amarama. Uh, we had 27 breakfasts before three o'clock in a row there and there was about six of us on that. Uh, then it went for about eight months non-stop every seven days a week and then I went to mountain position but then uh, when I got married we went down to Green Hills where I bought up and bought a house there and 160 acres and uh, we're in Green Hills about 11 years and Castle Rock about eight and then we come over to the Auburn Valley. Ted Edmonds wanted us to come here so that's how we got here. By the time I was 21, I'd had two new vehicles and had bought my first farm. But, I mean, there's been no help from nobody, but Faye and I did a lot from then on. Yeah, and where were you <coughs> from, Faye? Invercargill. Yeah. I lived there all my life. Yeah. When I was young, I always said I was going to marry a farmer, which I ended up doing, but I've enjoyed every moment of it. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, those cattle you got out of the Holyfield, did you walk them to Longville? Yeah, we were uh, six weeks in the bush on the way and we repaired all the yards because David got drowned the year before. <coughs> there was nobody to get them out, so we put a contract in, £600 to land a hundred head at Longville. And then we went into the Kaipo, that's just north of Milford, and must in the Kaipo for a start, and then come out of the Kaipo to Mackenzie's to get the cattle across. You had to cross the cattle through the Holyford River at high tide because it's tidal the, right up to Lake Makera and if the cattle go through they can't get out if the tide's out. <coughs> That's how people got drowned. The year. And we worked our way through there and we went to Martins Bay, to Big Bay, then we went over the <coughs> top of the mountains to the bottom of the Red Hills and then the Red Hills, we got into the Upper Pike and followed the Upper Pike right down till we joined the Holyford. And then the Holyford came out onto the road and we're six weeks in the bush and 13 days on the road to Lawnville. Now, you've seen the cattle change quite a bit. 45th sale here. Bulls looking a lot different than they used to? Yeah, they are a lot different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. We've been pushing to get the, the muscle up on them. <coughs> Uh, it's in that bit of paper in the catalogue that the lions do the scanning, scanning of the meat and we're, when they kill cattle at Matera now we're 14 but they kill our cattle for the day yeah. and we'll have 14% more meat on an average than anybody else and they're going to start and pay on yield grade not on weight yeah. and they'll pay you more for yield grade you've had about 13 trips to Canada and America England and Ireland, and we've had seven or eight to Australia. Go looking at bulls, we don't. Uh, sometimes you grab and you wouldn't see anything you like. You're trying to get 
more length and more uh, meat into them. And uh, I think we've got about oh, 29 bulls in the tank. They stay there permanent and just bring them out as we need them. And different sides, only use two or three different uh, bulls each. Well, I might use 10 sometimes to get bulls. Uh, a season. To, to follow the cows up. Yeah. And also, um, your genetics too being sourced from overseas, people buying straws. Yep. Feel it of that been going yeah, on over the years, had some nice balls. Yeah, we've had two, like El Dorado and Quantity, are virtually worldwide. And most, of the been... se most of the semen we get have been people who have swapped semen for our balls and they've taken them to Canada. We've sent semen over for it to Canada and for top cows in Canada and then sent the embryos back to us. Now some of the bulls here today, they they go back to those embryos. All the work you have done with the genetics and that, do you think you've got now the base herd of stud cows that... You're always looking to try and mm. get something yeah. better or to improve what you've got. Yeah. So you don't think that you'll ever find that? You'll never be happy enough? Always look for something else. Yep. It's been ex extremely interesting. And the further you get into it, the more you learn and you meet such a lot of good people. Like the Aussie people we had here last night, yeah. they're absolutely brilliant. Barry Newcomen and Clive McEachran, all the way here from Australia. Where about you from, Barry? I'm from Ansay in East Gippsland, Victoria. And a Hereford man? Yes, yeah, Herefords, commercial and, and studs. Yeah. We, our stud is Newcomen Herefords. Yeah, yeah. And how about you, Clive? Uh, I live uh, 45 kilometres west of Geelong, Geelong. In, in Western Victoria, yeah. uh, which we run Hereford cattle, stud Hereford cattle, yeah. and commercial merino sheep. So you're fitting a few studs in on the trip, Clive? Yes, we are. Uh, roughly, I think, six sales in a few days, which will keep us occupied, and uh, we will enjoy seeing how you do it and, and where they're sold to. and. How many they sell, which is always the name of the game. Yeah, and you've seen some fairly nice cattle since you've been over here? Absolutely. Uh, we've been thrilled what we've seen, and we've, the main thing, what we've been pleased with, is to see how much green grass you have. Yeah, yeah. Because we're going through, other than I live, it's going through a very difficult season. Yeah. So, what did you think of the cattle today, there, Barry? I was pretty impressed with the cattle. Um, we went down to one stud this morning. And then we had another stud here this afternoon of Kings. Yeah. And uh, very impressed with the cattle. The Kings cattle in particular, a lot of great formation in the cattle. Uh, we've had a look at the heifers and the cows and the sale bulls today. Pretty impressive, really. I think they're, I think they're on the right tram. Yeah. That's pretty good coming from an Aussie. Well, we feel that we can recognise good cattle wherever they come from. Yeah. And it's yeah. good to be amongst good breeders. And I've got to say, they're very generous breeders and very hospitable. Yeah. We've had a great time so far. Unfortunately, we don't come here enough. Maybe it's the same with the New Zealanders that don't go there enough. Yeah. But because we're always learning, no matter what they do. And we've learned here on this property, commercially, how, how cattle are run commercially, which a lot of stud breeders forget about. So, Daryl, the way things are going now, it's all about getting that meat on the bone. Yeah, that's what we're targeting with the stud, is the, the fact to try and get a greater yield from our commercial steers through the freezing company. So at the moment we're doing 14% above the average. That to us is, 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 is quite a lot. So if you have a, i.e. if you have a cattle beast that's doing um, uh, 16 to 20 kilos above the average, if you're getting $4 a kilo for that's an extra $80, but it should be on meat. The, the yield grade payment on the meat, not the fat and the bone, on the meat. Because a lot of cattle get a lot of bone, and then when the, the freezing companies, or the, the, the meat companies get the, the meat, get the cattle beef, sorry, then they've got to take the meat off the bone. They don't get paid for the bone, they get paid for the meat. So if you can put more meat on an animal with the same sort of density or the same type of bone as other animals, you'll get paid more. And the freezing companies might get paid more, we'll get paid more. You had to keep the fat off them. That's a genetic thing. Um, a lot of animals you can put on paddocks and they'll grow. Some those same or different animals you put on those same paddocks, they'll just go to fat, and it all comes down to breeding. With the old man, he spent a lot of time in, on the um, bloodlines of tracing meat throughout the world, 
and I, I think he's got it pretty right. Um, a lot of our cattle here, when we do scan them, they don't scan a lot of fat, but they seem to scan a reasonably good eye muscle. That, that's really important to us as meat. It's not just through our cattle, it's through our lambs and through our deer. So do you get overseas too and have a look at the, some of these bulls over, over yonder? Uh, yeah, no, I get around and have a bit of a look around, but um, um, as much as the old fellow I might disagree, we actually agree on a lot of things in regards to uh, carcass evaluation. I, I think that our, our eyes are pretty much in sync with what we want to breed. Uh, we have a, an eye for the future where we want to go, and I think it's very important that it's targeted on meat, not bone and fat. Neil McCrosty, no stranger to whale here if it's stud. Well, I came from Awaka to Invercargill as stud stock in 1983, so I've been here ever since. Yeah. And um, it's been a, a life-changing experience, really, I suppose, in a lot of ways, because this was a pretty undeveloped property. And Colin took it over in about the 1970-something, and uh, he's really done it all. And I remember he, in the old TD6... He was out there with a the blade on and he'd be going all day, all night to break it all in. And he just, just kept going. Like, if you ever saw a man work, it was him. Yeah. And he's done a great job. And you must have been highly involved on, on the genetic side of it. Uh, well, in those days, uh, in those early days, Russell Hinton was there. And when, when I first came here, the cattle were, were not big cattle. They were uh, probably for the times so they were okay, but then things progressed and we had to get make them a bit bigger, so we bred the size into them. We bought a few American bulls and that sort of thing, and some of them worked, some of them didn't. Calves looked good and so forth. Genetically, it did help, but the two bulls that uh, really helped the stud was um, Standard Lad 7Z and uh, Quantity 681. They were the two bulls that really set the set the pace. Uh, uh, and um, Put the development into the into the substance of the cattle, yeah. milking ability, meat-wise, and everything else, and it really, it really did set a, a good standard. And genetics go forward at a hell of a fast rate. And my view is that we don't use some of these older genetics for long enough. There's always something new coming on the scene, so they want to use that. And genetics is a funny thing that um, you can have everything on a bit of paper, but it doesn't necessarily nick to, to do the right job. Yeah. And that's what's happened in hundreds of cases. Yeah. So it's just, it needs a good stockman to, to balance it all out. Yeah. So how do you think the sale went today, in your opinion? Uh, today I was probably a little bit disappointed, but um, I think the cold weather in the last fortnight has probably just taken the edge off these cattle a bit. Yeah. I think they're good growthy cattle. I think the size is right, the soundness is right, the structure's right. A few plain eyes, which you can't have meat and... and um, good eyes as well so Colin's uh, his philosophy is meat and, yeah. and I go along with that I think uh, if you're breeding for meat there's no good breeding for eyes so he's got the structure right and now he can go back and get the eye part or the cosmetic part right. So one last question Neil how much whiskey do you reckon you've drunk in this building here over the years? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can add it up yourself I suppose for, for uh, since 1983 till today I suppose it won't be too bad I've only had a little bit today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do the job for whiskey, but I do it for fun. Yeah. But it's been it's been a great. I've had a great life in this in stud stock with Wright since for 35 odd years. They're a great company to work for, and they do a great job. They're, they're the leaders of the country, without doubt. Ben and Murray Forsyth, all the way from Taranaki, here at the 45th annual sale at Wayo Hereford Stud. Whereabouts in Taranaki are you from, Ben? Uh, in a place called Wongamomina. Wongamomina. Half, halfway between Stratford and Tamanui. You've been there for a while? Uh, 91. You have 30 odd years in it. 81, sorry. 81, yeah. 81. 81. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you farming up there, Ben? Oh, mainly here, just straight here with cattle. No sheep? 60. For the house? <laughs> well, that's about all, yeah, the plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you always buy horned bulls, Ben? Yeah, yeah, since I've gone into Hereford. Yeah. Straight Hereford, I've always bought horned bulls. Yeah, what's your reason for that? Constitution. Yeah. And the uplift of them. Horn bulls at the national, but I found that they were too well fed. Uh, hard fed. Didn't do too hard well with their comb. And they didn't shift. Just fold. Yeah. Yep. The horn Hereford studs in the North Island getting a little bit thin on the ground. They are. Mm -hmm. Not so many. Not too many studs up there. No. No. Uh, plus none of them have got American Canadian genetics in them either. Yeah. 
And you like some of those attributes? That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 You'd have a fairly good look through the catalogue when you're up in the North Island there, and by the time you get here, you've got a fairly good idea of what bull you've, you've got your got eye on. Fairly well picked out of what I what I want. Yes. Yeah. So you're not a, you're not a, a real big figures man, though, Ben. No. 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 Never have bought by figure. It's all eye appraisal. I like to to see a bull calf that's weaned well. Yeah. You, then you know you've got milk on the in the cow. Yeah. Yeah. Nice consistent line of stud cows out there, Daryl. You find the female side of it very important. The female side to any line of stock is very important. If you unless you've got the the mothering ability of those cows, um, you've got nothing. That the most important. I I think the most important part of a cow or a sheep's life is to produce a, a, a lamb or a calf. That's the first job. The second job is to, to look after that animal, to feed it, to mother it, to, and to get it through to production so the farmer can actually make some money so they can put it back into the, the female side of the, the herd. The, the females are, a lot of emphasis put on bulls, but females are very, very important. And those girls are all scanned? Yeah, they're all scanned. We're actually... Um, We've been embarrassed this year, we've um, scanned 11 sets of twins so far, so we don't know what the hell we're going to do. <laughs> so do you think these maternal traits have come through in your own children, Daryl? Definitely. Uh, my wife, Nikki, um, she's very maternal and uh, she loves her grandchildren. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely come through and uh, no, no, it's, it's good. You've got to have good females and I'm very lucky I've got a very good female beside me, my, my wife, Nikki. And uh, the next generation? Yeah, no, the next generation, they're, they're keen. Um, my son, Jamie, he spent... Uh, 18 months in Canada and America, following the studs round. So, uh, and my, my daughter Kate, she's keen on the on the farming on the farming side of it. And I'm lucky that both their partners seem to be um, uh, keen on farming as well. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. Like most of the families are quite involved and, and enjoy the cattle, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yes. Most of the family, yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's uh, quite good. And, and your daughter Sharon and Laurie over there quite strong with the Herefords too. Very. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, their their son then, really enjoys them too. Oh, and then. The other grandson, he's going with a girl up in Nelson. Nelson, and they they got a Hereford stud there too at Lake Station. Oh. She's a Hereford family. Just a Hereford family. <laughs>